Sorry, Theologica. Hey guys, this is another run on actually chapter 7.2 and the party and strategy here is going to be a Terra zero turn run featuring Terra, Lightning and Freya. I'll be including a timestamp in the video description as well as more details about the setup and the strategy as well so do check it out. Coming into the battle, I reset until I get a turn order of Freya starting first followed by Lightning followed by Terra. It shouldn't take too many resets to get this turn order because Terra is naturally slow. To maintain 0 turns, I had Freya do additional ability twice to charge her overhead, doing the general Leo call and then jumping into the air, so that wouldn't increase the turn count. Coming to Lightning's turn, Lightning's sole purpose is really just to charge the Ifrit summon meter without increasing the turn count. And she can do this by chaining her first free turn into LD, into free turns, into free EX, into more free LDs until the summon meter is fully charged. I set a Kaya's call on Lightning mainly for the rebreak to help charge the summon meter, and the defense down and poison actually helps as well. If you don't have Kaya's call, I actually think Ferris LD call would be a better option. The Dancing Dagger debuff would help you at a 79% threshold and a defense down helps as well. Lightning combined with the often spear from Freya should have more than enough turns or I should say free turns to actually charge if it's summon meter. So there we go, summon is fully charged. At this point, I'm just using up the remainder of Lightning's free turn just to get a little bit of free damage in as well. N don't forget also that Lightning's additional ability will reset Safer Sephiroth's Brave, which leads to one additional break per AA use. So that can also be used to help charge the summon meter right at the end. Once that's done, swap Lightning out for the Cisney Friend support use additional ability before you pop summon and that's quite important. So popping Ifrit summon here, Ifrit summon is really really critical because the goal is to actually give Ifrit's buff to Cisney and then Cisney will actually never get another turn for the rest of the fight after summon mode is over which actually means she retains Ifrit's buff. So if you pair that with a 5 over 5 ultimate weapon Cisney support and Terra's Burst Aura, Cisne can actually do a tremendous amount of off-turn damage and you, you'll see that later in the video. Inside Summon, what I had is Cisne doing LD, Terra doing Meltdown, Cisne doing LD once more, and then Terra going into LD. Once summon mode is over, Safer Sephiroth will warp his turn because you've passed the 79% HP threshold and Terra should have 2 more free turns remaining. Now there is a little bit of RNG at the 79% HP threshold. Safer Sephiroth's second turn is always going to be this Brave Attack and the Brave Attack has a 50% chance to inflict Blind and Paralysis. If Safer Sephiroth targets Cisne and blinds or paralyzes Cisne, the run is over and you have to reset again. If he debuffs Terra or if he targets Freya, then you can continue your run. So there's really only a 1 in 3 chance for him to target Cisne and out of that only 50% chance for the debuffs to land. So most of the time you should actually be fine. From 79% onwards after summon mode is over, what I'm doing is chaining Terra's LD into Meltdown so that I continuously give her free turns without increasing the turn count. It is actually very important to actually save 
Terra's BT Plus and Burst Mode because you will be needing them for the later parts in the fight. The goal is to actually hit 49% and trigger the second turn warp while Terra is in her LD Meltdown 3 turns rotation. At 49%, Safer Sephiroth will get another 3 turns in a row, and typically this is going to be Pale Horse, Heartless Angel, and the Shadow Flare attack. At this point, there is no damage mitigation in place, so Pale Horse and Heartless Angel will hurt, but even if it does full damage, you should be able to survive because Freya is actually evading that attack. Once you've passed 49% threshold and you're back at Terra's free turn again, this is where I pop Bridia's LD call to give both Terra and Cisne a 3 turn evasion. The purpose of triggering the 3 turn evasion here is so that both Terra and Cisne can evade the attacks when Safer Sephiroth hits 29% HP threshold. And the reason why I use that here is one of the 3 attacks at 29% will be the Brave Attack, and as mentioned before, that Brave Attack has a 50% chance of landing Paralysis or Blind, and at that part of the fight, you really don't want Cisne to get debuffed, otherwise the run is also over. So it's actually better to save the, uh, the Vidya LD call to ensure that it's impossible to get debuffed at 29%. Also, notice that I've already used Terra BT plus here, the best time to pop it is roughly about 35% and you don't have to be very accurate there. The idea is that you want to have 6 or 7 turns remaining when the boss hits 20% HP. There's a little bit of buffer here so if you're worried you can always start the BT plus when the boss is closer to 30% and you should still be fine. At 29%, right here, Safer Sephiroth will warp his turns once again and get 3 turns in a row, but since you've used Vidya LD Call, these 3 turns are guaranteed to miss and will not do anything to Terra or Cisne. Alright, at this part of the fight, the goal is to hit as close to 20% as possible but not go past 20% because at 19%, Safer Sephiroth will do Heartless Angel Plus and that will do 99% HP damage to your party as well as cause an instant break which may mess up the 0 turn run. I did dual cast here because Safer Sephiroth is at 23% and I want to bring him as close as possible to 20% but not go past it. So the combination of dual cast plus 6 days often damage plus spear is just nice to bring him to 20%. Right when you are at 20% and there's also a little bit of leeway here, either 21 or 22% is also fine. So at 20% what I'm doing here is popping Terra's burst mode and the goal here is to kill Safer Sephiroth within this burst mode so that I can bypass Heartless Angel Plus completely. And that's it! As always, I hope the video has been helpful, and if you enjoy the content, please leave a like, comment or subscribe, it really helps a lot. 
Till then, I'll see you guys in the next Lufania fight. Bye!